Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Indigo Communications. I'm Peter Martin, delighted to have your company alongside Alan Ruff and Hugh McDonald on this Tuesday. Don't forget, if you hit the subscribe button, you can join the football family as we talk about your favourite team. Uh, we deal with all the divisions in Scotland, any emerging stories, and look at what's happening, not only in English football, but in European football as well. So uh, it's well worth sticking with us on our YouTube channel and if you download the PLZ Soccer app you get all the breaking stories and of course interviews with managers and players and a lot of unique video content as well so thank you very much to the thousands and thousands of people who have been supporting us over the year we really do appreciate it and we do appreciate the fact that quite a lot of you are downloading the uh, podcast as well and joining us on the podcast on a regular basis uh, some people go out for a walk stick the old earphones on and um, people walk past them and think, why are they laughing? What's what's up with that person? <laughs> but it's always good. It comes in so many forums these days, Hugh. Absolutely. And it's there, there to be used when you want it. You know, it's great. That's what content's all about, content providers. And I'll heartily recommend uh, uh, the podcast because that's what I've done up at the old earphones on and listened to uh, Martin and Neil and Neil Lennon and uh, Gordon Strachan on my uh, walk through the park. Yeah, um, and of course, in your day, Ruffy, it was uh, it was a far more simpler thing when you were playing. It was broadsword calling Danny Boy. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe not that, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, <laughs> you certainly were. Certainly, it was uh, a simple medium. <laughs> maybe telly, maybe radio, but nevertheless, um, it's it's moved on. It's changed in so many ways, um, and with that in mind, I, I have mentioned the fact that. You know, these things have indeed, time has moved on, life has moved on, people's uh, attitude to uh, various things that happen in life has moved on as well. Ange Postecoglou today talking, um, of course, about the Ferrari surrounding the Football Writers um, event. Um, we discussed yesterday the people who'd won the awards, um, but the, the, the real fallout from it has been, Hugh, the decision by... Um, one broadcaster and Ailey Barber to walk out because she was disgusted really at the, the I think the tone of the uh, jokes made by the after dinner speaker that they had booked uh, for the event and it, it's really kind of a caused a storm and an ongoing one about the need and I think Ange Postecoglou said it you know okay a mistake was made the content wasn't good the Scottish football riders have to learn from this and move on and show that they've learned from it Yep, and I think uh, Poster Coggle, who incidentally was there on the night as well, and as far as I know, heard all the remarks. I don't know if he, if he remained in the hall, but he was certainly aware of the remarks. I think that is a very wise uh, and, and sober assessment of, of what's got to happen. I think uh, the Football Writers' Dinner has a long and storied history, and... Uh, but I think this was a watershed moment, Peter. Yeah. I think now, uh, the way it's been run before, or the way it's uh, uh, the way it's gone on, generationally it's moved on. I was at the dinner, and I talked to both women afterwards and, and to the younger generation, uh, my colleagues, and uh, yeah, the very clear message was that you know that this had to change and and this had to move on. And and to be fair to the Football Writers Association, they've acknowledged that in their statement. And I think Angie's uh, words, this has to be a learning moment, uh, has to be taken on board. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there are a lot of people who obviously are, are commenting on our feed. Um, and I will obviously mention the, the point of if you are commenting on it, uh, try and keep the same decorum that everybody is trying to keep um, and an informed point, if you can, on uh, this issue. It is a thorny subject, Ruffy. Um, and, and and I think you know a lot of people are rightly pointing out that the football writers has to move on. It was an ill judged booking, um, and the content of it was offensive. It wasn't just you know t t towards uh, women. I think some people may well look at other things that were said on the night. Um, I know that Ange Postecoglou commented on things that may well have been offensive to his Japanese players. Um, so I think there's got to be a lot of soul searching before they move forward and realise that, you know, it is a broad spectrum of people who are coming to that event 
uh, and you've got to think carefully about what the event's about, the prestige of it, and you know what is said on the night. Yeah, I, I think it's, as you said, it's a watershed now for after dinner speakers. I think if you're booked for an event, you you have to be sensible enough to look at the clientele because you don't want to offend anybody in the room. You know, so whatever you're going to say, you have to make sure that you you're, you're appealing to everybody in the room, not just. 50% or 70%. So, no, I think uh, it has now been out, it's out in the open now. And uh, I think now, if you're booked for anything, you, you have to be very, very, very aware that nobody's going to be offended. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, and with that in mind, um, we, we are getting a lot of comments on it. I, I wouldn't grace um, this uh, programme uh, to reply to some of the comments that are coming up on it. All I would say is quite simply that if uh, you read some of the ill-informed comments that are on there, just ignore them. Um, because it, it is one of those situations, you where it could actually, you could make, I could make five programmes on it. Oh, well, I was just going to say that. Uh, I, 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 I could easily, because I'll tell you right now, I, I, I applaud Ailey Barber for the uh, situation where she wants to walk out because she feels so strongly about it. It, it, there is a line on where people are offended mm. through comedy. There is a line in whatever action you take because if you're offended, you have every right to either mention to the people who are involved or indeed walk out and don't put yourself through uh, this situation. It takes a lot for me to be offended, I have to say to you. Uh, and I've witnessed on many an occasion, you know, racism, sectarianism, um, the the real I think angst of Sunday night was uh, misogyny and sexism. Yep, I think so too. And it's very difficult as a man to 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 comment on uh, the the scale of the misogyny because it's not directed obviously at yourself. So you have to go to to um, uh, the women and, and say, well, what? How did you feel? How how did this affect you? And I must say, when I went out um, after the after the uh, the speeches and I went into the bar, there was a lot of women there really angry and hurt by it. So that's an authentic uh, reaction to it. Uh, I just feel as well that if you're going to have, there's a huge discussion about free speech and comedy and where comedy boundaries can be drawn and where they should be drawn, which would take us hours, Peter. Yeah. But I think it's fair to say that in the setting uh, where you've got a professional body doing a dinner, that is not the place to have any people pushing boundaries or, you know, that should be an inclusive event that's celebrating um, uh, Scottish football. And uh, one of the, 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 you know, there's many fallouts uh, from this and one of the saddest Fallouts will be that you know that uh, Scottish football will be labelled totally as reactionary, as sexist, as um, homophobic, as racist. It'll be looked upon. The mainstream media will be looked upon as full of you know dinosaurs for want of a better word. And you and I know that's simply not the case. And and I think if you speak to many uh, women journalists, as I, I took the opportunity to do over the, the last couple of days, they don't recognise that. You know, there's real severe problems with, with women in journalism. I'm not, and I'm no way underestimating them. Yeah. The, the amount of women in sports journalism, and, uh, particularly in the print media, is astonishingly low, and it, and it has to be addressed. But if you talk... Uh, to people that we know in it, they, they don't recognise um, some of the, the statements I've been making about the entire culture of sports, right? Uh, so that, but there's so much to talk about here. I, I, again, I go back to what I think is, is a, if you're looking at a positive from it, Peter, this has been a mushroom cloud. This has been a moment that's concentrated the minds totally on this and Things will change from now. Yeah. Things will change because they cannot remain the same. Not just from for cultural, ethical, moral reasons, but from that I mean sponsors won't wear this, Peter. You know you yeah. know you know more about this world than I do. But the sponsors on Sunday night won't wear this kind of fallout. They won't want to be um in any way linked with that kind of stuff. So this, I mean, this is a moment that has changed uh, that culture. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, uh, you know, uh, we discussed the, the situation. Uh, the football writers have released a statement, obviously um, apologising 
for what was said on the night and uh, I think everybody and their granny has had uh, their opinion on it. One of the things that we pride ourselves on here at PLZ Soccer, totally out with the, the situation that uh, arose on Sunday night, is we have um, a motto which is just join the football family and we try and ask people to be decent um, about how they conduct themselves, be it on a news feed, sending us emails, all of that um, and I think we stand by a record on this program of being all inclusive as balanced as we possibly can and we all share a love of football you know uh, uh, and more often than not um, I, I think when it comes up we condemn racism and I'm, I'm an ambassador for show racism red card um, we condemn sectarianism uh, in the which I think is a huge problem in this country uh, and of course, um, I think a lot of people are showing their support around <coughs> Ailey and others who decided to walk out, you know, on the basis of uh, any sexist or misogynistic comments, Ruffy. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what more you can you can actually do on it. You can continue the fight because I do it continually on here. And by the way, lambasted on a regular basis for it. But um, yeah, I think anybody that's listened to the show any time it's been thrown out there, you've been on top of it right away, you know, in, in any the subjects that uh, have come up. So, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think anybody can hold that against us, but we will give a, a, a view uh, on anything that goes on. You know, some people like it, some people don't, and, and that's where we stand. Yeah, and I would say one last thing, and I think this is a point of balance. Um, we, you know, can witness whether it be in an insular situation of, of Scotland or UK or um, further afield of tarring lots of people with the same brush. Mm. Um, just because you don't walk out of um, a hall um, does not mean that mm. you're not, you know, you're not uh, in some way disgusted by it or against it. Uh, there are a lot of really good forward thinking journalists working and are members of the Scottish Football Writers. It's just that was a wrong call and and in hiring the speaker and the content of it for the audience that was there present at that night. Yep, and then it's also it's it's a it is that yeah, is that wake up moment uh, for some people who are not racist or misogynistic in any way, who but who, you know, uh, you know, are, are, um, you know, we're there on the night to, to, to sit and say, you know what, this has to change, and this, you know, this isn't this isn't an un all inclusive um, uh, forum. This is people colleagues feel uncomfortable, and if colleagues are feeling uncomfortable, they should not feel that way, well, regardless of sex or gender or race or religion. You can't have, and this is the problem where you're going to have. I think I will have to have a sea change in in the, the uh, in uh, the uh, dinner, and that it's going to be um, it's always very difficult to get an all inclusive comedian, uh, just with the very nature of comedy. And I think the whole thing will will have to change to, you know, maybe a speaker, maybe, you know, um, I don't know, maybe more more celebration of the actual sport itself. Um, I think the whole thing has to veer away from what it has been in the past. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt, um, I'm listening to you and I'm reading most of your ill-informed comments. How many of the PLZ cast sat and laughed at it, I wonder. I will tell you right now, we were all at a table aghast by it all. So um, choose your words carefully, Matt, um, before you post them on here, because at the end of the day, Ruffy, if I had to walk out of every dinner I'd been offended with um, mm -hmm. anti-Catholic Jews, <clears throat> I'd be getting in my car about eight o'clock most nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, everybody's different. People are different. People are offended in different ways, mm. and you've got to respect uh, everybody's feelings, mm. and that, that's the bottom line of the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we've um, we've <coughs> dealt with the subject. Thanks to <coughs> so many who have pointed out their own point of view on it, um, and what they think about it. Um, it's one of those things that I think will go on for um, a fair few days, and hopefully, at the end of it, um, there is a chance for the Scottish football writers to move forward and, uh, and maybe build some bridges along the way. Um, I'm sure they will be in contact with Ailey at some point and others who decided that they wanted to work out, walk out of the uh, event. Um, so, there you have it. 
Uh, as far as the uh, football show is concerned, there, there are games here that we're going to talk about. Um, Celtic are on the verge of a title. Rangers are playing down games, trying to force Celtic all the way to the end and with a mind to two huge cup finals coming up for them. Uh, St Johnston now know that well, they've survived the first part, which is, I think, avoiding relegation, but they've got huge games ahead, knowing that the playoff is looming ever closer. Uh, and we'll talk about Erling Haaland and get Hughes' take on him signing for Manchester City. Here's the Scottish Premiership fixtures over tonight and tomorrow, and I hope that uh, Hugh and yourself, Ruffy, will post separately your um, predictions for the games. We want, to, we want to make sure that everything is in a separate box now because it's getting tight, yep. Ruffy. That's all I'm saying to you. <coughs> Dundee Hibs, Dundee United Celtic, Rangers against Ross County, St Mirren Livingston, St Johnston Aberdeen and Motherwell against Hearts to look forward to. And of course, um, tonight, um, Hibbies will be heading to Dens Park mm. thinking, oof, David Marshall being linked with them. Uh, I did have a chat with David Marshall at the PFA Awards the week mm. before and he said he was coming home to Scotland and I automatically thought Hibs at Aberdeen. Yeah. Uh, and, and we I, mentioned it. And a good and a good move. I mean, uh, I mean, people forget the... Uh, that not that long ago he was the hero of the nation, you know, uh, with this game uh, coming up uh, in Ukraine, it was uh, David certainly made it happen or helped make it happen. Good move, good move for him. He's at the time of uh, of his life that he, you know, he wants to come home and settle back down. Uh, and I think very important, we've we'll, we'll, we'll watched Celtic this season and we we'll really, you've really watched the importance of having a goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it seems such a banal thing to say, but everything kind of stems from it. How long ago was it when they get thrown into the the den for Celtic? Uh, uh, the Barcelona, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he might have been eighteen, was That's he not? Some, could be the best part of twenty years. Yeah, and 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 over and above that, I remember because he he saved the penalty from Ronaldinho. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And he was he, he just he was spectacular that night. Uh, yeah. as only goalkeepers can be. The reason I place. remember that save is because. <laughs> <laughs> because I may as well say to Ruffy since he always tells me about um, Kubias' shirt because I have Ronaldinho's shirt from that night. Have you? <laughs> the penalty that he saved. Oh, so keep, wow. yeah, that's not a bad shirt, is it, Ruffy? Brilliant, superb. You yeah. happy with that one? Yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Ronaldinho is, I mean, just to go off a complete tangent, see if you took out the real goats and the arguments about the goats. I'm always surprised that, that Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho I think it belongs in, 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 in just about I, in that, that I think, company. I think he's in the top 10 yeah, players of all time. Thing, yeah. I also think the Brazilian Ronaldo oh, sometimes God, overlooked. The real Ronaldo, yeah, the yeah, first Ronaldo. The, Ronaldo. The real, by the way, sir, it's a blow if you are the Portuguese Ronaldo <laughs> and you mean, say so. the I, real Ronaldo. I, I, well, the first one then. Anyway. I mean, I've got yeah. nothing but admiration for the Portuguese Ronaldo. I think yeah. he's a, you know, doesn't he? You know, courting controversy to say he's a great player. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, it's just down to your own uh, thoughts on this one, but uh, certainly David Marshall, I think a lot of uh, Celtic fans look back with uh, great affection about what he achieved, but I think you know, if Hibs could land him, Ruffy, mm. I think that's a brilliant signing, even at 37 years of age. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, we saw what Craig uh, Gordon has done. You know, unfortunately, uh, Dave Marshall's had the odd wee injury here and there, you know, it's sort of a hiccup to when he's at really at his peak, he's picked up an injury, he's lost his Scotland place, lost his place down in England as well, but a fit David Marshall up here would be a fantastic sign. Yeah, there was a wee sniff, Ruffy, that maybe Derek McInnes was yeah. emerging at the front of the queue uh, for this job. I still think in the background, I don't know if the, I don't know if they've got a a bit of ambition, but I still think if they could, uh, see if they could get Malky, if they could get him, I think that would send out a clear signal to the <coughs> Hibs fans. We mean business. We're going to hire a manager who's going to manage this club instead of us interfering. Yeah, well, the unfortunate thing is we don't know the way this uh, board and owner is thinking. We don't know what, how he, what he thinks of. We thinking of a, a football inside because we know Malky, we know what he's done in the game. But they might just go on a, a, a tangent that's mm. not anywhere near that. We, we won't know until... We, we start getting snippets of who they're interviewing because I believe they're now interviewing up here. They've been interviewing down south. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be really, really interesting then to see who that is. Yeah. Um, Dundee, they've got their own problems. Have to rebuild. There's only five points from 11 games, Mark McGee, but he's hoping to be involved next season. 
it's a big call. Uh, Gordon Strachan, I think, is going to take a more hands-on approach mm. to this Dundee um, setup, the structure, the recruitment. Um, does he look for the experience of someone who is effectively his old teammate and his friend? Sad man, only Gordon could answer that. I mean, he's what, not going to go for somebody any experience. You, I can mm, tell you that one hundred percent. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think the championship is a place to go for that when yeah. everything, all the chips must be on get back up. That is not a division where you want to go into and try to get back out of. Uh, Alan uh, can, can can talk about that, and uh, you've got what you've got. If you look in Scottish football now, you've got clubs. They were automatically what we'd call in the old days first division. By that, I mean premiership clubs who are miles off it. Now, you know, Dunfermline, uh, miles off it. Falkirk, miles off it. Morton, miles off it. Dundee cannot afford to go down there and stay there two, three years rebuilding. <laughs> this is a get by. It's a trampoline job, Peter. Get yeah. by right away. So I can understand why they want to experience. The problem with them reputationally is that his marks just simply hasn't worked. It just simply hasn't worked. They brought him in as a, a, a you know, like, you know, let's get it over the line, let's have a bit of a bounce. And there was no bounce. Yeah. None. And it's hard to say whether there would have been it's hard to say whether there would have been any kind of consistency or different um outcome if James McPake had stayed there. But I ha- I have to say uh, you know, my own personal opinion is I think he might have got more out of them. You know what I mean? Well, they because just came off the back of two really good results. results. Yeah. You know, and then a new manager comes in, and every new manager's got different ideas of what player he wants to play and what player he doesn't play. There have been games that they haven't been any worse than the team that they're playing. They've just not been able to hit the back of the net. Uh, last Saturday was a perfect example. They had mm. more than chances there to take the game. I, I think they missed big. Play, I think they missed the big boy Ashcroft at the back. Mm. Uh, it's amazing that one player can make not that much a difference, but a difference. But I think they'll be an empty at, at Dundee. Uh, I, I think once they get relegated, they'll find out how much money they've lost this year. You know, I, I think the only teams that have come up from our division have been teams that are throwing the throwing the bucket at it. Aye. Dundee United, Kilmarnock, and Dundee last year. Yeah, yep. I, I, you've got to be prepared to have owners who are going to give somebody four or five grand a week, and and these are the clubs that are, are doing it. What size is your bucket? No, we bucket. I think I've not been at a school where there's none of our boys on on a grand. Yeah, you know. So you know, you look at Kilmarnock. They, 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 I bet when they didn't they think they were going to get it, they fire in Lafferty Aye. at X amount of pounds. I don't know what he's on, but I don't think it'll mm. be. You know, the boy Ashcroft to mm. bring him up and throwing money at him as well. And all the teams have done that, and it just depends if you're that that kind of club that do that kind of thing. Because the end of the day, you've got to look at the books. Mm-hmm. You know, and Dundee's books will be horrendous. Yep. Yeah, you absolutely. Um, uh, listen, another another you know, club uh, who will be playing on this Wednesday, um, they've spent a lot of money as well, Dundee United. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they'll be looking at it and saying, right, we don't want to be there to make up the numbers, but I think most people who are trying to get tickets, and some of the Celtic fans are trying to get tickets in the United end, mm-hmm. um, but this is basically <clears throat> Celtic fans heading to Tanadai saying, this is the coronation, this is where they're going to win the title. And it would be very, di- I mean, it, it, I mean, it only needs a point. Uh, and, do you know, it's getting to the stage because there's only two games left. All they need, basically, is not to lose 5 nothing as well. You know, they would have to lose the last two games 5 nothing. The Rangers would have to win the last two games by a similar scoreline for the, yeah, the, for, the swing. Goal, for the goal difference to be overturned Yeah, the swing. So, yeah, but I think the, the interesting thing about Celtic is that um, I predict, you know, I, I thought, well, there might be some nerves in this team hitting the, you know, uh, hitting the, the split. But they've actually been pretty powerful in the split. They were very good at Ross County. Good result against Rangers. That was more than satisfactory result against Rangers. And then going behind to Hearts and then being so decisive and coming back against Hearts. So Poster Coglu will be looking at, rather than staggering over the line, he'll be talking about, let's breast the tape at 100 miles an hour, let's go right through it. And he's got the forces to do it, Peter. I mean, I, I thought in Robbie Nielsen's uh, quote um, on uh, after the game on Saturday when he talked about who Celtic brought on in the final third of the, ma- you know, of the match, in the final third of the pitch, 
It was just, it's just, it's just top quality. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the manager of Celtic wants to make sure that it is uh, something to celebrate tomorrow night. You know, under no illusions that um, you know tomorrow night, you know, we got the the opportunity to make it a special night, um, you know, for the football club and our supporters. And um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm 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 sure they'll enjoy it. I guess it's uh, it's it's one of those, as you said, after last year's disappointments, not just. The fact that obviously we didn't have success as a football club, but you know they weren't able to to feel a part of it because you know they couldn't contribute because they weren't allowed in the grounds, the stadium. So, yeah, so they are allowed in the ground. They are going to try and celebrate it. Um, it's been an amazing season. Um, I thought he spoke very well on Sunday night, and he said, you know, the it's great picking up all these awards, you know, he's really humbled by it, praised his side, his backroom staff, and said that the only award that he was delighted he didn't pick up was sacked by December. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think if we all go back to the beginning of the season, I, I, I think, uh, not everybody, but I would say a majority went, who is this? Mm. You know, what a, what a mistake this is, you know, we're uh, bringing in a guy. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I, I know you're saying that, and, and people jump on what I call you know, uh, uh, stories where they embellish things. I, I can't remember. I can't. There might have been one or two who said, "This is who." Who we all probably said, "Who is this guy?" Because we didn't know him. But did anybody really turn around and say, "This is a mistake," or "This he's out of his depth" or anything? Well, people, think people were probably looking and saying, <laughs> "It's a transition from a side that was in but, disarray." But I think there were people saying it after five games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe. You know, initially, you know, well, that, initially yeah. talk sport and Alan yeah. Brazil just went. They went nuclear on him from mm -hmm. day one. I mean, there was laughing on the, you know, where are they digging up these guys from? And the, I mean, the, and those clips will be uh, much uh, viewed tomorrow night because they'll be bookmarked by, I'm sure, by by supporters. I think there was a healthy scepticism about them. I, I think that there's no reason for everybody to come out and say, oh, there was bunting. Welcome. People were saying, I remember this show on it and people will be there in, in the archives somewhere. The, the, nobody was nobody was slaughtering them or anything. I would just say, "Oh, they would. They, they've gone. They've taken a real chance here, and they've got." Yeah. Of course, Posto Coglu would be the first guy to say they've taken a chance. I think a lot of people, if anything, were slaughtering the club on the debacle that was Eddie Howe. Yeah, Eddie Howe was a, and the club itself, Peter. The club itself will be the first to tell you that the Eddie Howe thing ended up. They were in the wrong with that. They should have cut. They should have given Eddie Howe um, a deadline. And said, "Listen, Eddie, if it's not over the line, but we're there, we'll move elsewhere." But give them credit because the name that they moved to has turned out. I mean, he's been a real figure of substance, Peter, in Scottish football. Yeah. Um, we don't know how it's going to progress, but not only his management, his management style, and winning a league with a new team, a yeah. new team. I'll tell it's you what. Astonishing. I, I'll tell you what I admire about him the most, and I've been in his company on a couple of occasions and sat down in a kind of a one-to-one -one mm. situation with him, as you're very well aware. Um, I like the way he approaches things. Sometimes I think it takes an outsider uh, to show um, almost the lunacy of our country and the way he conducts himself. Um, so he kind of takes a kind of a, a, an outside view on things. He's calm. He's measured on it. He doesn't get you know. There's no knee jerk, rash statements. I think he's very, very measured in what he does. And secondary to that, I thought it was just lovely to see him, whether it was Ibrox or Celtic Park, embrace Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. They were smiling. They were chatting to each other. It was. I mean, I, I'm. I, I'm actually pinching myself in the 21st century saying about two managers with nothing but the utmost respect for each other mm -hmm. instead of people's perception that they're all at, you know Celtic and Rangers managers at loggerheads with each yeah. other yeah and it's quite it's funny Peter because historically when you when you look back and I've been doing a bit of research on uh, Rangers and uh, European finals for obvious reasons for a piece I'm, 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 I'm writing and you see things like uh, you know, Rangers uh, officials uh, being at, at Glasgow Airport to, to welcome Celtic back from Lisbon. You know, <laughs> Scott Simon congratulating Jockstein in person. Yeah. And we know Alan will know this as well because he's a lot of generation. Celtic and Rangers players actually going out together on a Saturday night, Paddy Kerr and yeah. Jim Baxter and, and, and it all. 
been uh, but really quite a lot did that in the 70s, 80s, yeah. 90s and the two yeah. I mean yeah, Scott, just, Br- uh, Scott Brown and Kevin Thompson are great pals and Stephen, Stephen Whitaker yeah and please go but just the, that stuff seems to have been forgotten uh, the, 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 that does exist behind the scenes you know because of everybody thinks that because they've got polarised positions everybody else must have a polarised position because see when you're talking about um, Ange and Geo embracing There'll be people uh, watching this program saying, "I'm not having that. I'm yeah. absolutely not having that." Yeah. Well, we don't care because we don't we, we, we don't really uh, relate to those people. But nevertheless, um, Dundee United against Celtic. Uh, yeah, I can understand where United are coming from. Just lots of tickets being bought mm. from Celtic fans that they're obviously trying to clear that area and make sure United get it. Just one little point I was going to highlight to you, Ruffy. Uh, the one thing that Celtic fans are hanging on right now is. It looks as if Spurs might be willing to talk. We know mm-hmm. that if Celtic meet a certain figure for Jota, they'll get him. That would be two huge uh, signings for them if they could get him in long-term deals. Yeah, again, for for him, it's all about money. Uh, I would, I would think then at Spurs, he's on a decent wage, and 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 he will be told uh, what the cap is at Celtic because I don't think they'll go down the road. Uh, no breaking it for anybody yeah. so it's, it's a matter of what the guy wants and I keep saying it you know has he enjoyed playing football up here has he been enjoyed being a hero and a, and a, and a team that's got 50,000 supporters where he wouldn't be getting it done mm-hmm. in Spurs and he's in European football and he's got to be impressed that, that's for me that's what's going to be pre- I think the options every guy's got options mm-hmm. and then the options for him there's no option at Spurs because even if he goes by there, he's yeah. not going in the first team. I think he's been out on loan six he's times. Exactly. Yeah. So what does this to say? Does he say, you know, is the rumoured interest from teams like Leicester, etc.? Is is that is that can that stand up? Or do I just say, do you know what? I'm 24. If I have two more seasons here at Celtic, I'm going to get Champions League next year. My options could really open up. My options could really open up in front of me. So it's a, it's a, it's a business decision. It's a professional decision. Uh, and I think he's more important than Jota. I realise I might be in the minority there. Yeah. I think you know the key to winning the title was Celtic's defence. And he was absolutely central to that. No, I agree with you on that. Um, listen, uh, I, I, I asked yesterday, Rangers are taking on Ross County at home. It's a chance for... I think lots of Rangers fans to go there and just show their appreciation uh, for the achievements of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's uh, side. Um, I, I'm going to read this one out, which was sent to me by my mate, um, and he says, we've got flights booked the next Tuesday uh, to Malaga, but <laughs> I'm getting lens replacements on my eyes this Wednesday, and I can't fly because of the pressure of the flight, so I'm going to have to hire a camper van and drive, and I have to go on the ferry. Um, as <laughs> going through the channel tunnel will have pressure on his eyes and he says it's only a 27 hour drive now that's my that's my pal Marty and and Marty and I lived in a a flat together when we first moved to Edinburgh and and you know Marty was a huge Rangers fan it was in the middle of the the nine in a row so as you can imagine uh, (laughs) Ruffy he leathered me regularly every day and the great thing about it is he's one of so many Rangers fans we always say planes, trains, automobiles, by hook or by crook, they're getting there. I think the great thing about Marty is we raised a lot of money to try and get uh, you know people to, to hold them down, and then we were able to cut the Rangers McCune's lager jersey off because he wore it every day. Is that yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure he's got it framed somewhere, but he's indicative, uh, oh, Marty, yeah. of people and who are just yeah. desperate and to I, get there. If you're a supporter, you want. <laughs> <laughs> you want you at the end of the day say I was there. Aye. Yeah. You know, the Celtic were in Seville, Rangers were in Manchester. Aye. After the scenario, win or lose or whatever, you want to be. I witnessed that. I witnessed everything that was in that yep. city. Yeah. I witnessed before it, after it, the days leading up to it, how we got there, how we, well, how my, we get uh, back. My, uh, the, one of the guys uh, we would call the German Trips uh, crew, yeah. Andy, uh, he's, he's booked up. He, he's going to go from the Algarve. That's where he's staying. Yeah. He's going to go up for, to Seville from day, but he's got a ticket because he did the really smart thing that he went into the UEFA ballot before the finalists were even known, uh, and came up with a chance, and and he got he got his ticket, which is magnificent, yes. isn't it? So he's sitting there. Uh, he'll be whistling all the way from the Algarve up to Seville. Yeah, um, and and I think it's. Um, I think so many people wanting to do. They should do what you and I uh, did, Ruffy, as well. 
you just go in and buy 50 programs. <laughs> you just, you just, then you get, you yeah, get all the memorabilia yeah. and then that's you, you've cracked it, haven't Sent, you? Uh, yeah, it's fortunate if you can get them signed as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, which, which <laughs> okay, okay. I remember, you know, I, I remember once being at a, a function, Peter, that you were at and um, uh, the, the Lisbon uh, programme came up and signed by all the players and by Jock Steen and of course, that can never happen again. Oh yeah. And I said, I said, oh, I would be, even if this is a couple of grand, I would be, you know, I'd be tempted, and I don't have that, and I don't <laughs> have that memorabilia. Yeah. But the the question was made somewhat irrelevant because it went for thirty three thousand wow. pounds. Yes, Peter. absolutely. I remember that, and there were a good few millionaires oh, in the room. Uh, there wasn't half. Um, and it, 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 six of them each. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Off> that <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you're right, uh, uh, Hugh. The, the one uh, that I actually, and I hope you know, Rangers fans will do this and get people to sign it. If you can get the whole team to sign it, fantastic. Because um, I think Rangers will win the Europa League. Um, but uh, I remember the 2002 Champions League final uh, at Hampden Park. Oh, yeah. And Real Madrid win 2 1 against mm-hmm. Bayer Leverkusen. And the next day, my uh, boss at STV said, get out to the Hilton. Mm-hmm. All the managers are staying there, see if you can get as many interviews as possible. And I had the programme from the actual final. And as I walked into the foyer, you know, people are mulling around. There was everybody running back and forward. And there was just a, a man on the right-hand side with thick rim glasses and everybody was walking past him, nobody giving him even a moment mm. of their time. And I looked and I thought, oh, my God, I have won a watch. Mm. And I walked over with my programme and I tapped him and I said, please, could you sign this? And he just looked at me and he just gave me a little wink and a smile. And he just went, Ferenc Puskas. Friends. And that was it. Boom. That was me. Happy as a kid in a sweet shop. Four and one European final, he got, didn't he? <sighs> Fantastic. Four, four eh? goals and one European final. What a player. And, uh, um, and when we we're talking about worldies, you know, that generation of worldies that because time has passed and we've forgotten about the De Stefanos, the Hentos, and the Pushkasses, the Mazapus yeah. of that era, the Yashins. Yes. He was really to the, the four late fifties, early sixties. Was it yeah. was it Puskas that uh, Jim Baxter It was, yes. 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 Let's not no, tell no, that no, story. Right. Right. No, no, I'm just going to say <laughs> this I'm is a man who scored say. four goals in a yeah. European yeah, company. No, You're I, talking I, about the story. empty in Black Hill. No, no, I'm just going to say he took it to a party. Ah, yeah. That's all I was going to say. That's I was going to say because the last thing we want is Hugh to get up and walk out. anyway, apart from anything else. Um, if you are a Rangers fan and suddenly you get them signing it or you get the person who scored the winning goal, oh, yeah, you, you, it's priceless. Um, as far as uh, some of the players who are desperate to play in the remaining games and maybe even get themselves into the squad for that final, uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was commenting on Ahmed Diallo. Hasn't quite worked out for him. This is what he had to say. Um, we can give a lot of players the chance to make minutes. I think Ahmed is a player who benefits from that. He will get minutes in the last games. You can see what he brings to the team. I'm really happy with his performance and with his behaviour overall. What happens next season? We haven't discussed his future. Once the decision has to be made about the squad we will, uh, uh, and what it's going to look like next year, we will make a decision about who we want to bring on board. Um, I don't think Ahmed Giallo is, is coming no. to Ibrox, to be perfectly honest with you. Don't think he did enough in his loan spell. No, I, I don't think he did either. And he'll say, "Well, you never gave me that many games to show you what I could do." Yeah. Uh, but again, it depends on the club mm-hmm. that he's with just now. And and I noticed an old this morning. I was looking at the the chat, the English playoff games, and that uh, name propped up that uh, for Sheffield Wednesday. Not Ross Stewart, the boy that was at Celtic, Roberts. Mm-hmm. Patrick, Patrick Roberts. Roberts. Patrick Roberts. Scored the winner for Sunderland. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we saw him at Celtic and we're going, where's he going to go? Absolutely t- superb. And just, mm. I don't know, is he still on loan? Yeah, I think he's still yeah, on loan. I think this is another loan deal, yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though, that I felt sorry for Sheffield Wednesday, but did you see the pass from Barry Bannon that, that Sheffield Wednesday scored from? Uh, I, think, I think he only took out seven players with it. Bannon as well, is, uh, if people can go on YouTube and they've missed it this season, Bannon scored an absolutely worldie. Oh, it's a cracker, week, yeah. The other week, so just key it in, Barry, Barry, Barry Bannon worldie. Scored a couple. Technically, he's a, a great player. That's a funny old division, that, because... Yeah. 
it is it's the land of the giants and it's the ball the ball needs a paracetamol at the end of the game and and it's funny both teams are dotted with good players you know technical players like uh, Roberts I wonder if uh, Eden McGeady will be back for the playoff final because I know he's getting yeah uh, he's getting back fit so uh, they play I think it's is it Wickham they play in the, play, the playoff yeah final? Wickham Wonders yeah um, just out of curiosity and I, uh, I hate to bang on non-stop about it's evolved because we've got other games to talk about but um the tickets and the distribution of the tickets. I know it was there is actually talk of them using the the stadium that Celtic played in um, for uh, you know Eintracht Frankfurt and Rangers fans who want to watch it maybe in the big screen. Um, but they're talking about a huge amount of German and Rangers fans being in the city who won't have tickets. Uh, there'll be a fan zone. There'll be areas out with the fan zone where they're going to try and accommodate uh, the fans that don't have tickets. So uh, it, it it's a it's a logistical nightmare. Well, so what, uh, you know. Well, I was in Seville what about a month ago. Uh, I was there when Betis were playing Frankfurt and when Seville were playing West Ham, and the city was creaking. The infrastructure was creaking at the seams with that that night. Uh, what people forget is it's, it's a rather small city. It's a very concentrated city with yes. the old town uh, and everything round about the river. Um, so, if you talk. It's getting the Seville calculator out again, isn't it? Many many people will go, but if you look at it, what we know as a fact is that 100,000 Frankfurt supporters applied for a ticket. We know that for a fact. We know for a fact that 30,000 Frankfurt supporters got tickets for the new camp. Right? Yes. So that would indicate that there's going to be a sizable amount of Frankfurt supporters in Seville and its own wrongs. And you're going to have to say the same about Cell, uh, about Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're going to have to say the same. Yeah. So that'll be a, a city that'll be creaking at the seams. Uh, and I think the, the stadium having it beamed with both sets of supporters. They have, to, it, just, it, they have to do something to release the pressure. Yeah, it has, they have to, I, mm. I don't think the fan zone thing worked in Manchester with Rangers. There was too many complications, you know, because mm. people were wandering about. There wasn't enough getting in. The, the, the actual game was breaking down in the cable, you know, because of the volume. So I think in a stadium, uh, I think the fans would love that, you know, and, 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 and buy in. Everything but it increases the, it means that you're then policing two in games game, uh, yeah because you'll need massive stewarding policing yeah. ingress and in one place I agree with you absolutely all over, you and, know. and there's going to be just sorry to labour this uh, even if you put them all in one stadium 40,000 capacity and you put them all in the, the car tour I don't know what that is say 60,000 yeah they're still going to be overspill. Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing, by the way. What a nightmare of a stadium that is to get to. Oh, uh, the old transport well, system was a disaster that night. Um, just can, to, can I just ask you, and you, because obviously I played in the, the Scotland-Brazil game, what stadium was that in? Because that seemed to be in the mountains in Seville. Well, I wasn't there. It wasn't in the city. I remember yeah. the bus. I remember the bus taking us from Malaga, and it seemed to be absolutely no. yeah. two hours away. Is that the one where you get cuffed four one? <coughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Was well, it not? Was that not the the Betis Stadium, the Ballon Pay? No, it was in the middle of nowhere. It was yeah. over the mountains. Because I remember oh, could all the, the Betis statement stadium not have been uh, you know in the middle of because nowhere? Because I remember all the fans saying it took us ages mm. to get there over hills and mountains mm. and yeah. But yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, let's. Yeah. We'll have a look at that, Ruffy, and see if we can find uh, hills and mountains. You, uh, due to you claiming altitude sickness or something like that oh, for your performance, trip. That trip. Stadium, the Benito Villamarin. That's the that's the better stadium. Is it? Well, there you are. And it's no. Listen, you're talking about up in the mountains and that. I walked. I walked from the train station in Seville to that stadium. Yeah. Well, maybe that, it's because we were in Malaga. Well, do you want me to tell you something? The, the thing about well, it Malaga's is... Malaga's a different city, so yeah. of course it's going to be Absolutely, a city. Absolutely, like, yeah. That's <laughs> like saying, that's like saying Ibox is in the middle of nowhere. Why? Because we, we were in Aberdeen and it yeah. was a long drive. Don't look for logic in them, by the way. There's a plaque. <laughs> at the, the stadium has been uh, done up, but there is a plaque to the left-hand side there uh, on that stadium that I'm showing you, Ruffy, and it says, this is where a dare chipped yeah. Ruffy is near uh -huh. post. And it, um, does it say at the other go? Uh, <laughs> equal they're just plaques all over the place. <laughs> There's mere plaques in a dangerous surgery. Yeah, um, uh, Stephen Scott is not happy with me. He says, 
Peter. Um, he's paid me a compliment, which is nice of him. Mm. Um, but please don't give the Jers the kiss of death by, predi- <laughs> by predicting they'll win in Seville. I know we'll have you next week uh, here at the programme, but I think they'll win. Do you think they'll win? I think they'll win. I think they'll beat two better German teams than Frankfurt. And I think the only difficulty Rangers will have against Frankfurt is Frankfurt will be more cautious than perhaps... Um, uh, uh, Leipzig and BVB were because yeah. they were pretty confident that there were better teams than Rangers so I think it may be a more cautious game than people but I think they could win yeah yeah ok St Johnson against Aberdeen tomorrow night uh, Callum Davison is actually just saying listen it's it's been one of those seasons but if we survive with the playoffs um, it's just as important as that cup double last season different pressures it was enjoyable pressure last year this year it's a little bit harder to, to deal with and I think it'll just be up there for me uh, just as big as an achievement. I've probably learned probably more about myself, more about my team, my, my coaching staff this year than I did last year. You know, when times are tough, it's, you know, you've got to dig in, you've got to look after each other and you need to have other things to think about. I think when you win games last year as we did, it was it's easy to keep the motivation going, easy to keep the, the sort of spirit and the buoyancy in the, in the dressing room. So this year's been a lot harder. Yeah, it's been a tough season for St Johnson, but they are looking on, never mind taking on Aberdeen, they'll be wondering what's happening yeah. between Inverness, Cali, Thistle and our broth, mm. Ruffy. Yeah, they need to go into that playoff on the back of at least a win and a draw. They, they can't go into that playoff with two defeats, two heavy defeats. Uh, so we'll be looking for the players to put in some kind of performance to take them into the playoffs. Uh, it will be interesting tonight, you know, to see what the score is between Inverness and, and our broth, but it's not going to be an easy game for them. We saw, what was it, Hibs? Hamilton beating Hibs. You know, it's possible. It would be an absolute tragedy. Indeed, for indeed, the last season. Yep, yep. And it would be a tragedy, obviously, with the two cup wins last year, they get relegated. Who do you think they'll, they'll face? I think tonight will be a draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, Broth won't uh, give them such easy goals as what we gave them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it'll all be down to a Broth for me. Uh, I think Inverness are possibly the team that's playing the best of everybody at the end of the season uh-huh. and I think our both have had a tremendous season but I think they've, they've obviously got to be tired you know mm. with the amount of effort they put in yeah interesting um, who do you think is going to win it Hugh? I think Inverness for the, the reason that Alan says they're playing their best football at the end of the season yeah. but I think it's pretty tight I wouldn't be I wouldn't be putting a mortgage on it yeah um, Aberdeen um, dismal <coughs> dismal season for them the Dons just want to forget all about it um, and as far as players heading out some players that won't have a future at Pataudry Jim Goodwin has already highlighted more than a few um, but he has actually let Christian Ramirez go back to the USA now just to maybe recharge the batteries and come back fresh for the new season we've decided to give Christian Ramirez a, an extra week off um just to, to get himself back to America with the family due to the heavy schedule that Christian has had this season. I uh, spoke about it last week. He, he, he looks a little bit fatigued to me and I, I put that down to the volume of games that he's had prior to coming here. He was playing in the MLS and um, I think that's shown in some of his performances of late. So we've, uh, we've given Christian permission to go and be with his family in America, uh, recharge the batteries and come back uh, middle of June pre-season, hopefully fresh and ready to go again. So, Ramirez is staying, more than a few are going. Yeah, it's, it's hugely difficult as well because uh, the, the most important thing for, for Jim at the moment was knowing, he'll know who he wants to move on, Yeah, but he also faces the problem of players moving on that he doesn't want to move on and that the two who would be at the forefront of anybody's mind would be Calvin Ramsey, who spoke so very well on in, 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 in Sunday, I felt. Uh, and 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 Lewis Ferguson, so you know there'll be decisions to be made over both of them. Uh, I think uh, the Ramsey situation would be irresistible. Cash in on them and then give the manager something uh, uh, to, to to build a squad. But it's very very difficult if you're losing your best players plus. You've got guys moving out. It's a huge summer for Jim Goodwin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Motherwell against Hearts. Um, Motherwell have just steadied the ship a wee bit, but Hearts, what a fantastic end to the season mm-hmm. it could be for them. They had their Player of the Year at the weekend there. Craig Gordon again dominating. He's he's fair-filling his uh, mantelpiece, isn't he? Yeah, I was speaking to him after the, the award ceremony. I, I honestly, when I, the first time I've seen him for a while, and I, is he six foot four or six foot five? 
Yeah. He looked very tall and very lean. I never uh -huh. realised how lean he was, you know. And well, that's what footballers are now. There you can, you no can body sense fat. that, you know, he's obviously had a tremendous season. I think he could go on for another couple of seasons at least. Mm. But I've been to, it's all, Hearts now to the cup finals all about team selection, who he thinks needs a rest, mm. who he wants to give a game to, who he wants to try and get in to impress him for the final. So team selection will be everything for Hearts. Yes, yeah, St Mirren against Livingston is the other match. Um, it's interesting now, the way the world has changed, reports claiming Benfica are going to offer yeah. a six-figure fee uh, for Dylan Reid. He's only 16 years of age, but more and more clubs are actually looking and thinking, Let's snatch some of the Scottish talent and then develop it. It's, it's it, it really is a phenomenon that's happened now because you know you, you, you can walk about Stirling and meet a mate and he he can tell you that the boy next door is still playing at Bayern Munich. Yeah, uh, you know we know that Dokes went down to to Liverpool. Um, it must, I think it to a certain extent it must be pretty frustrating for the clubs because okay they'll get development fees and all that. But uh, it does place a whole question mark over the viability of of uh, academies yeah. if, if you're just if you're just getting development fees for players because a lot of these academies you know are big money exercises Peter and it, it, it does place an existential threat if you're just if you're getting even Celtic you know the rumored thing was half a million for for for, uh, for dogs so I mean they'd have been looking at him having a significant early career with them yeah. and then selling them on for proper money. Do you, you know? think it's time the rule changed? I don't think it will though. I think all rules now are, I think it's, I, I, I would look at it now and you say to yourself, on the other hand, you've got to look at it from the clubs like Celtic and you know, Scottish clubs, it's, it's not a great way, but for the young players, is very beneficial because they're getting their opportunity young. Yeah. The, the club should be rewarded if they've got a, they've taken in a kid at 10 years of age mm. and, and brought them on and, and at 16 they're going to take them for £100,000 no, or something no. like that. It's that needs to be changed. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, that's the games that are on tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, the predictive table, I just thought I'd show you, it, uh, Hugh, just to give you a flavour of how this is all panning out for us. Alison McConnell's up there at 309. Ruffy and myself, nine points behind her in this predictor with um, basically 50 points to play for, Hugh. So it's down to the wire. I think there's going to be a shock mm -hmm. in the final run. And you're in there at 281. And then the two, I can only describe them as losers, are too far behind for me. Tam McManus and then Tam Cowan in 259. Losers. It looks as that's if. Very tough. I mean, that's really it, tough. It looks as if Tam's taking us to a nice restaurant. If McManus loses. I mean, I think we'd be as well just putting some Kellogg's cornflakes out. Is there still a chippy at the Murray? Yeah. And you just go right? <laughs> that's that, what I want to know. That's what will happen if he, w if he ends up last. Um, so there's your prediction. Don't rule me out finishing last either. I'm not, I'm not safe there, Peter. I'm, um, I'm still, I've still got hopes of finishing yeah. last. Yeah, I right. still think there's a 20 pointer in it for uh, somebody. Yeah, so do I, Ruffy. I absolutely do. And uh, listen. Uh, Alison will be inconsolable if we sneak it from her. Yeah. You know, try your yep. best, will yeah, you? Yeah, I'm really going to concentrate after this show. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell by the look in your face. Um, Erling Haaland. It saves them concentrating during the show. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Once we start yeah. with that. Yeah. Where did I play again? <laughs> what stadium was it? Um, what about Haaland? Uh, it's the worst kept secret. Yep. But uh, he is going to Man City. They've confirmed now the deal's done. £64 million release clause. Undoubtedly, in the next five years, he's going to earn a fortune. Oh, uh, he's a he's a tremendous talent, Peter. I'm lucky to have seen him um, live in many an occasion. He's got everything. He's got the ability. He's got the technique. He's got the strength. He's got the pace. He's a terrific finisher, and he's a good guy to play. He's a very unselfish guy. He he, he loves scoring goals, but he loves when a team scoring goals. One of the great things you'll see. It's when a Bellingham or a Sancho, who was his, his great partner in crime, when he scored, he was so delighted. He wants to win. Uh, he's very gregarious type, very confident, loud, just a big boy. Um, so he's got everything going for him. Um, the down, the slight thing is, you know, we talked about earlier that uh, Pep Guardiola is not a great number nine man. We know that because every time people talk about false number nines and that, Listen, Haaland's good enough to play anyway. He'll play centre half if you want him. He's yeah. a top player. And score from there. Yeah. <laughs> he's a great he's a 
great modern number nine. So I wonder if he'll calibrate his team to play to the strengths of Haaland because, you know, he could be, a, I, know, I know Manchester City have been inordinately successful recently, but he could be a game changer for them. But, By that, I mean, he could be the guy that brings them in the Champions League. Yes, I think that's the one bit of the jigsaw. That they really need that. They need that, or he's going to be viewed differently, I think, in history. I think he's viewed at the moment. I think already there is people talking about, um, if you talk about Pep, Nobody can argue that he's not a great coach. Yes. He's a terrific coach. Not only that, he's an influential coach. Every league he's been in, the coaching standards have gone up yes. because of him. But he's not the perennial winner the way a Mourinho was, the way a Fergie was. He hasn't won the Champions League since Barcelona. And he's been at uh, Bayern Munich side and he's been at Manchester City, the richest side in the world. So there will be questions. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the English Premier League. What's on offer um, for uh, this midweek as well? Uh, Villa against Liverpool tonight. Then you've got Leeds against Chelsea, Leicester, Norwich, Watford against Everton. What a huge result at the weekend it was for Everton. Suddenly, uh, the escape pod is there for them. Wolves, Man City, Tottenham against Arsenal. Uh, wouldn't it be great if Wolves really pulled a... Pulled out all the stops, Ruffy, and won the game. Like today. Wolves have scored 18 goals at home mm -hmm. this year. Okay, so it's not going to happen. Thanks for that, Ruffy. Brilliant. <laughs> he can uh, tell us that, but he yeah. can't tell us <laughs> where he played. played. Exactly. <laughs> See the Haaland one, I, just when you were talking about there, I could just imagine getting into wee Betty and signing a new contract and going, could I have a sell on clause in that, please? He's <laughs> 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 oh, He would have been able to put it in for you because he didn't want to sell you. Um, as far as... Uh, listen, Liverpool are getting ready for their match. Jurgen Klopp has said, well, he, I think he's had a wee pop back at people who, especially Pep, who have suggested that everyone would prefer Liverpool to win the league. And he's right on top of that. I was right with Pep Plays and, and Tottenham still, that, and, and he was right. We won the Premier League only once. I have no idea if the whole country is supporting us. That I don't know that. Um, uh, it's not the feeling I get, actually, when we go to other places and play there. It's actually the opposite. But, um, yeah, maybe he knows more about that than me. <laughs> a bit of gamesmanship there. At the end of the day, I think Pep's probably feeling there's the weight of opinion uh, yeah, um, well, is that they've got that much money that people yeah, want under the underdog in it. Yeah, another thing about it as well, and I'll be quite frank with you, I don't know if everybody wants Liverpool to win the league. I would like them to win the league. And I'd like them to win the league so they could make you know incredible history. But also because... And it's a, it's a subjective point of view. I believe they play the better football. I, I believe, you know, I've watched both sides live. I was down watching West Ham with Liverpool the week, and Liverpool's a joy to watch. Everybody, everybody's just moving forward. You know, there's no over-elaboration. They're going for it. I love them. And the second thing is that, that it seems mad to talk about a team with, with Robertson, Manny, Diaz, Salah, etc., Van Dijk. As underdogs, but the, the the budget is an underdog budget, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I'll take love. I know you will as well. Yeah, Ruffy, Ruffy, still my man, say. Yeah, yeah. okay, hanging yeah. on in there. Okay, um, you've got your own thoughts on who you want to win down south. Could Liverpool somehow win that quadruple? Uh, just one little footnote that I think has implications for everyone uh, across European football, especially here in Scotland. UEFA have agreed the new Champions League format beginning from 2024-25 uh, season. Um, places will now be awarded to the highest placed team in two countries with the best coefficients from the previous season. Uh, in addition, the number of group matches has been reduced from 10 to 8. Um, but the number of teams in the Champions League is going to rise from 32 to 36. Um, what's your take on that, Ruffy? No, 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 I'm not too sure about the, the, the coefficient thing, you know, because again, it it's it's, looks as if it's going to be the league with the most money mm. uh, and, and the most power. Now, the powerful teams are going to be the ones that are going to be selected, so I think everybody else is going to suffer for that. Yeah, OK. Uh, Hugh? I think it's uh, the last another part of the last stand against the European Super League, and I don't think it'll work. I think the European Super League has not gone away and, in fact, will come about. Yeah, OK, interesting stuff. Will Celtic and Rangers be there? I think, well, if it's Agnelli's plan comes in and it's 20 clubs, they'll be in the second division. I think this season's been hugely important for Rangers because you'll have to bring something to the table. And what Celtic Rangers, Benfica uh, um, and 
some Scandinavian clubs can say says we bring fan engagement. Yeah. We'll make this because there will be no protests from our countries. We will be very pro European Super League. Yeah, let's not forget Ajax and that as well. Of course I. Um, listen, uh, as far as uh, we're concerned, we deal with uh, as many issues as we possibly can, try and give you as uh, fair an assessment and as balanced as we possibly can as well. There's prizes uh, on this show and there's one coming up next week. Um, George Laurie's waiting to see the uh, Ken Dalglish painting because he won that on this show. Uh, Geo Thompson providing that painting uh, and we'll let you see it before we hand it over to George. He's a happy winner. You could be a winner too. Keep it locked to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Download the app if you get a chance as well. You'll get opinions. Some you like, some you don't. But uh, we love football and hopefully you'll join our football family. Thank you to everyone uh, for watching today. We'll see you tomorrow from Hugh Ruffy and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. <laughs>